we have our gauges on the system and right here you're sitting out at the condenser with your gauges you're looking at 278 psig on your gauge so you're going to look at your your gauge or your pressure temperature chart and you're going to look over here at, at r22 this is that column right there this is from our textbook we're going to look at 278 PSI is equivalent to 125 degrees, just like in our diagram over here. So it, it is 125 degrees. Now remember, when you have your gauge on the system, your high side gauge on the system, and you're looking at this pressure and you're converting it over to the temperature, just like we did, you'll notice that the here it is right there, 125. You'll notice that um, the, that pressure converts to 125 degrees Fahrenheit, yet you have your thermometer right here, uh, right where your gauge is connected to the, to the liquid line, and it's reading 105 degrees. And that gets confusing for some new technicians. So what you have to think about is when you hook your gauge up to the, the liquid line or the high side, you need to picture in your mind that you are measuring the temperature at the exact center of the um, condensing coil. All right, you're looking at what's happening here in the center of the condensing coil. You're not looking at what's happening here where your gauge is connected. All right, so what you're doing is your, your gauge tells you the saturation temperature and pressure of the refrigerant in the middle of the condensing coil and then your thermometer tells you what the temperature actually is after it's been subcooled all right and the way that we get our subcooling in this is we take the 125 degrees fahrenheit that we that we read on our gauge and then we take our 105 degree fahrenheit that we are reading from our thermometer at the liquid line and we subtract the physical temperature of the refrigerant line from the saturation temperature and in this example we have 20 degrees of subcooling on the system and that is a properly charged system in this example manufacturers are different and this ensures we have a solid column of liquid hitting the metering device and this is operating properly and everything is good to go all right so we have our solid column of subcooled liquid hits our metering device. Now remember when we um, when we looked earlier, when you reduce the pressure of refrigerant or any kind of uh, gas, it reduces the temperature as well. And that's what this metering device does. It is a restriction. And basically it's like putting your thumb over the end of a hose and it starts to spray that refrigerant into the evaporator coil. And right at the metering device, as, it's, as it exits the metering device, it is 75% liquid and 25% and vapor. That flash gas is what that's called. That 25% vapor um, has actually no cooling capacity at all. It's, it is part of the refrigeration process, but it has no cooling. So the manufacturers have to design the coils so that they're large enough to compensate for that 25% vapor and that the, the rest of the liquid that makes it on through to the um, evaporator coil is sufficient to cool the house. So you don't have to worry about that, but you do, do need to know that 25% um, of the refrigerant flashes over as soon as we hit the metering device.